here are a few tips in order to get the highest price from your diamond. And this is, applies whether you're selling it to us at Diamond Cycle or you're gonna sell it to anybody in the diamond trade. And tip number one is have a GIA report. We strongly recommend that you have a GIA diamond report for diamonds over one carat. And you should never, ever, ever buy a diamond that does not have a GIA report. Your GIA report will help you to receive a fair market value for your loose diamond or diamond jewelry. Beyond that, we consider you to take a look at the diamond itself as you seek to sell your diamond for the highest possible price. And you should know what the four C's of diamonds are and how does your diamond rate in terms of carat, color, cut, and clarity. And for a refresher, we define the four C's of diamonds as the following. Carat. Now this is the size of your diamond as determined by its weight. And in case you're curious on how much one carat is, it equals 0.2 grams. Color. Now, while at first glance, most diamonds look clear and diamonds actually often have a slight brown or yellow tint to them, the color grade is determined on a scale of D, void of color, and Z, having a yellow tone. Cut. Now, this is the actual way that the diamond is cut, which is determined by the proportions and the angles of each facet. And some of the standard cuts are point cut, table cut, old single cut, perusi cut, Marazine cut, and old European cut. The next is clarity. This is the prep flaws, inclusions, internal flaws, blemishes, scratches, or clouds that might occur on the interior or the exterior of the stone. Compared to a chip diamond, a diamond that is flawless is rare and incredibly valuable. Next, you have to understand the brand of your piece. If your item of jewelry comes from an important jewelry maker, that can often elevate the value of your loose diamond or diamond jewelry. That said, the premium, or lack thereof, conferred on any piece is absolutely dependent on the brand's value on the secondary market. The next is you need to inspect the diamond for uniqueness. Is your loose diamond or diamond jewelry incredibly unique? It will be able to demand a higher price tag. That said, if its desirability is based on a certain trend of style, the current standing of that trend may positively or negatively affect the price of your diamond. Consider your diamond's condition. What is the condition of your loose diamond or diamond jewelry? If your jewelry piece is chipped, damaged or missing stones, you will likely see the impact of that damage in the price tag as well. The next is consider originality. Is the setting unique or does the setting, not the stone, have a value in the secondary market? As most commercial rings settings are recycled, not resold, their value is solely dependent on the value of the metal. The value of the metal is based on the gram weight and what material it is made of, whether it is 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat gold, or platinum. The value of the setting will absolutely affect the value of your jewelry piece in the secondary market. While settings often demand a higher price when bought, this hefty price tag often covers the labor to make the setting alone. With the retail markup charged by the manufacturer, the wholesaler, and the retailer. While your setting may have been marked up, three distinct entities covering their costs and factoring profit, when you sell your setting, you can truly only charge for the base value of the metal. That said, if your piece is a signed, important piece of jewelry, an antique, or even an original vintage piece, you may be able to receive a higher offer for the setting than the market value of the metal. The next is knowing your diamond's provenance. The provenance of a loose diamond or diamond jewelry is its history of ownership, who has owned it previously, how did the current owner acquire it? Does the diamond have a storied history that can deeply impact the value of a very important or large or rare diamond? Now, this we're not talking about commercial diamonds. We're talking about diamonds that are sold for millions of dollars at auctions that have very storied list of owners. For example, was your diamond owned by Marilyn Monroe or was your diamond owned by a member of a royal family in history? These types of stories can add to the value of large and important diamonds. In addition, knowing the provenance of your diamond can help reassure buyers that your diamond was never acquired by unscrupulous means and that it is not a blood diamond. 
Given the strong legislation around the mining of diamonds, a clear provenance saves buyers from worrying about authorities later confiscating the piece. Whenever the seller can supply the provenance of a diamond, it is always helpful in reassuring the worries of the buyer. So let's talk about selling your diamond via diamond cycle. At diamond cycle, we purchase loose diamonds over one carat or diamond jewelry that includes at least one diamond over one carat. We are experts in buying estate jewelry, older cut diamonds, European and mine cut diamonds, and chip diamonds that we recut. We welcome all questions and queries and can't wait to further assist you with your diamond selling process. Your neighborhood jeweler, Diamond Cycle.